using U.S. economy so strong, it will continue recession-proof. Nothing can derail the U.S. economy in 2020 presidential election year. So that's what the Goldman Sachs report said. And of course, we know unexpected happened, pandemic, uh, and then we had the shutdown. And during this shutdown, in a single month of April, we lost 10 years of progress. 10 years of job creation gone away in a single month. But as the economy reopened, and thank you, President Mandy, you uh, reiterated important point. Uh, you advocated for the uh, keeping the uh, real estate as essential. We re re relay that information to the governor. So as the economy reopened, uh, the jobs began to steadily come around. If we look at the job chart a little differently, uh, it looks like the following. So April is when we lost that 20 million jobs. Then the first stimulus, do you remember the $1,200 check that most people receive? Small business loans, which one does not have to repay if you meet certain criteria. The enhanced unemployment benefit. Uh, maybe some of you tap into that because we also lobbied hard to say independent contractors should qualify because it's not the fault of the realtors as to why uh, they don't have home sales in April, May, when pretty much everything was shut down before things began to steadily recover and then uh, you know, really surge. So maybe uh, you were able to tap into that. So stimulus uh, money provided some support for the economy uh, in May, June, July. But as you can see, things were fizzling out, which was the reason why we needed that December stimulus that President Trump signed. So a $600 check is already in your bank. You see it. President Biden is saying that is insufficient. He wants to raise it. Maybe people will receive additional $1,400 to make it into a whole 2,600 plus 1,400 uh, amount. Uh, and also extend, say, the mortgage forbearance period a few additional months uh, because economy was fizzling out. We know that by second half of the year, Medical experts believe half of America will be vaccinated by autumn, another quarter, which means herd immunity by uh, autumn period, maybe late autumn, uh, and back to normal. Go to restaurant, travel, you know, people miss travel, uh, you know, going to the ball games, all that will begin to appear late in the second half of this year. But until then, we need some stimulus money to get us there. And that's why President Trump and now President Biden sort of raising the stakes. We also know as an economist, there is no free lunch. So the bond market is already acting up from larger budget deficit, larger national debt, printing of the money, additional of the money, uh, which means that the mortgage rate that you are accustomed to, record low mortgage rate 2.7%, is probably ending. As we approach summer, mortgage rate may inch up to about 3%. One thing that you want to relate to your client, longer they wait, mortgage rate will likely be a tad higher. Nothing alarming, 3% mortgage rate, many of you will say, I will take that. But nonetheless, I think the absolute low point on the mortgage is already over because of the massive stimulus, means large budget deficit, and the bond market is already acting up. Let me turn also to the greater Phoenix job market condition. It is one of the best uh, in the country and you should feel very grateful. Maybe it's always that sunny weather, especially in the winter months that attracts people to come to the Phoenix region. Maybe it's the pro-business environment uh, that attracts businesses to come to Phoenix region. However you wanna view it, it is performing much better than the US economy. How do I say that? Well, let me go back to the US. This is the US. Red line is a reference line for year 2000, which matches the 2010 foreclosure crisis and the lockdown. But look at the greater Phoenix region. It is consistently above the red line. Even with the foreclosure mess that you saw in 2010, it was still above. And then 10 straight years of job creation really boosted jobs. And look how far up you are from the red line and almost reaching the pre-pandemic employment condition. So one of the better job market performance in the country. And if you look going all the way back to 1980, this is remarkable. I mean, this is one of the, you know, back in 1980, 
with half a million jobs, it would have been considered a mid-sized town, the Phoenix region, for people who have been there. I know many of the people in the audience, you probably moved in from Illinois, California, uh, you know, other states. Uh, but people who have been in the Phoenix for all these years would remember how uh, th things were easier in terms of traffic, driving around, but it just boom from half a million job to now over 2 million job in the long span of this 40 year chart. Uh, quite a remarkable uh, growth. Let's now look at 50 state variation. Arizona, it is down 2.8%. So what is that? That is the number of jobs compared to one year ago, December of 2019 to the latest data, December, 2020. So essentially saying pre-pandemic to current. So Arizona is down 2.8% and that is actually better than national average. I think national average is down about 5%. Certainly doing much better than California, eight, uh, down 8% and Nevada, which is so reliant on travel People are not going to Las Vegas, certainly hurting. Uh, but if you see uh, one distinguishing variation is that generally the Northern states, New England, Midwest, uh, they had a stricter lockdown, which hurts the economy. While two states, Idaho and Utah is the only two states with job creation because governors in Utah and Idaho in essence said, look, coronavirus is dangerous but we are not going to shut the economy down. Please be careful out there, put on the mask, follow social distancing. We will not shut the economy down. While California, as you know, uh, you know many people are complaining about the uh, lockdown being too restrictive. So it's hurting on the business front, but trying to contain the virus. I mean, the reason for the lockdown or strictness of the lockdown is trying to contain the virus. But fortunately, realtors across the country uh, have demonstrated and you know, Arizona was one of the first states to at least conduct uh, real estate businesses because you have demonstrated that you can show your clients in a safe way, sanitizers, masks, social distancing, uh, and certainly safer than going to the grocery store. So you have gained the confidence of the consumers that you can conduct businesses in a safe way. So Arizona down only modestly, uh, one of the better performing uh, state compared uh, uh, definitely compared to say California uh, or New Mexico, the, the nearby. Uh, one interesting aspect of the current recession is also the following. The economy is down as reflected in GDP. Uh, you will often hear politicians talk about GDP. Uh, in essence, it's the total production in America, gross domestic product. And it was down massively in the second quarter, still down in the fourth quarter. We, we are in a recession. But if you look at the right-hand column, personal income, it is above one year ago. This is the first recession in American history where on average, Americans have more income during a recession than before the recession because of the massive stimulus. I mean, some people are even jokingly saying people are using stimulus check uh, to gamble in the Wall Street, you know, you, you downloading some of the uh, free stock uh, trading uh, app apart, uh, but first time ever, Americans have more income during the recession than before. I know there are families out there struggling, paycheck to paycheck, if they have a paycheck, worrying about their next grocery bill, worrying about their next house payment. So we know those circumstances, but at the same time, on average, Americans have more income now than before recession, first time ever. What are people doing with this extra income? They're not spending it. Savings rate is much higher, certainly above the normal condition, which hints that once the vaccine is widely distributed, people will be unleashing the savings back into the economy. Second half economic growth looks to be very, very positive from this picture, assuming that the COVID variant virus, all that is contained uh, and the vaccination do the trick. So we are, uh, we can feel comfortable the second half of the economy will be good. The first half is where we are uh, need to that stimulus, you know, that stimulus to get us until the second half of the year. Now for the good news, independent of the high unemployment, independent of the pandemic condition, once the economy reopened, 
buyers were out there trying to buy homes. Larger size home, they need more elbow space working from home. And also people want to say that uh, if they don't have to work in San Francisco, why am I so close to San Francisco uh, paying million dollars for this small housing unit when I can buy a mansion out in the uh, Phoenix region, Chandler and, and elsewhere. So uh, home sales have really surged during the pandemic. Not only did it make a U-turn, but and then some going way beyond the pre-pandemic uh, activity. If we look at the price point, what we are seeing, I mean, this is a national data, uh, you know, Phoenix is uh, almost national average. I mean, California is very expensive and other cities expensive. But when we look at the price point across the country, the dark orange line shows where the sales are occurring. Sales are occurring more in the upper price points. So million dollar homes, which is a small segment of the market, but the double in sales. If we look at the lower price point, sales are barely positive or the very low price point is actually negative. And you may begin to wonder, are people buying only expensive homes? And answer is, people want to buy affordable homes but there is not enough inventory. The yellow line, light yellow line reflects the inventory conditions. And you can see there's simply not enough inventory on the lower price point, And that's why sales cannot get done. And I think you can attest on your daily experience, if you had more inventory on affordable price points, you can get the sales done. We simply don't have inventory. Mortgage rate, Falling to record low was the reason for the sales surge and also maybe the upper end uh, market going up. Uh, but we also want to highlight that 2018 mortgage rate increase from 4% at the beginning of the year in 2018 towards 5% by year end. During this period, home sales, believe it or not, stagnated, did not increase. Many markets, it actually declined. Wasn't 2018 part of that great 10-year economic expansion? And answer is yes. Even in a good economy, home sales can decline with rising mortgage rate. That's why it is critical that mortgage rates remain at historically low levels. Right now, large budget deficit, larger debt, 10-year treasury acting up, as I alluded to, we may have finished the absolute low point of mortgage rate only difference now versus 2018 is that mortgage rate increase now will be only in decimal points. It's not going to be a full percentage point increase. So by summer, maybe 3% mortgage rate. And I think many of you will say, yeah, I will take that. Uh, you know, it's not the absolute low, but it's still historically favorable. So this is what uh, I mean by uh, just decimal point or two increase in mortgage rate uh, by summer. With a buyer strong, prices are getting elevated. The orange line reflects the median price. Uh, it is up 13%, but it's been driven or skewed a little upward on upper end uh, home sales. You know, if the million dollar homes are getting sold, it's gonna lift the prices. To control for constant quality, there's something called Case-Shiller Price Index, constant quality prices, and that is rising 9.5% uh, through November. But irrespective of how you are looking at this, what this means is that a typical homeowner in the greater Phoenix region have accumulated around $20,000 or $30,000 in housing equity just by being a homeowner. They're a homeowner January of last year, they're homeowners today, boom, they have $20,000 or $30,000 more in housing equity. It also means that if the mortgage forbearance period ends, Let's hope that they can find job due to the stimulus or find job due to the vaccination in the second half of the year. But for those who cannot find job, it does not mean foreclosures. It simply means they will sell their home as a normal home sales because of significant run up in home prices. So that's one big difference now versus say 2010 uh, when we had the massive foreclosure. But let's cross our fingers and hope they can find job uh, so they don't have to uh, sell their home. Um, you know, we want people to sell their home only for good conditions, trading up, improving their life, better school district. You know, we don't want to see uh, people forced to sell their home because they don't have a job, they don't have income. So let's hope uh, that people can find job uh, uh, soon. Now, the 
The constraining factor, as I mentioned, is lack of inventory. Inventory is at an all time low. We have never seen inventory level this low before. Less than two months supply, four months, five months, six months would be considered normal. There's not enough homes. That's why multiple offers becoming quite prevalent. Good for home sellers. But can you imagine the buyers or you are representing the buyer? Please, please accept our contract and you have to start all over again. So having low inventory is not healthy. We need to assure that we have sufficient inventory uh, so that people can slow down their decision-making regarding which home to buy. And second, you, you, so you don't have that multiple offer constantly. So, you know, you can make, uh, you know, you make an offer, contract is signed, and then you get your commission income. So we want to make sure uh, that there is sufficient inventory. And if there's more inventory, it also means more home sales. What is the prospect of getting more inventory? And the prospect is the worst of the housing shortage will soon come to an end. America experienced underproduction of new home construction for 13 straight years, but now it is breaking higher. One year, we will not solve the problem. It may take two or three years, but at least the worst in housing shortage will likely come to an end. To build a home, it takes about four months, six months uh, to complete. So only around late spring or summer, we may begin to see more inventory begin to pop out, but the builder's housing start is beginning to break higher. Very good news. And furthermore, builders are focusing on single family, not multifamily condominiums. So you can see the builders are building much more for single family and rightly so. When we look at the preference, People want to buy single family homes over the condominium. They need larger spaces. They want backyard. Uh, they are staying at home more frequently. So they want larger size home. We need that single family home construction. One surprise that the builders face, negative surprise was that lumber prices skyrocketed. The wildfires out in the Western state limited the supply. So the, the lumber prices went up. Now it's beginning to moderate somewhat, but still elevated. But if the lumber prices can come down more, it will be great news for the builders to build more homes and great news for the realtors as people buy new homes. And generally it's not for the first time buyers, it's for trade up buyers. As they trade up, they're gonna release their, release their old home onto the MLS so the realtors can conduct their business. So we want the lumber prices to go down. But one thing that has been hindering was that uh, President Trump did place tariff on foreign lumber and President Biden is emphasizing buy American, buy American. I mean, to the degree possible, we want to help our fellow American citizens and you know, buy American, it's all good. But there are also cases where if we import, it helps more job creation in America. If we can bring Canadian lumber, it means lower prices, more home building in Phoenix, more job creation in Phoenix. Furthermore, more inventory means more business for title insurance, moving truck and realtors. So jobs can be created and more strongly if we can bring more Canadian lumber to tame this uh, lumber prices. Let me focus now, change the topic uh, quickly on commercial real estate and this new economy of working from home. Office demand is just simply collapsing. Fourth quarter number is out and it's even deeper decline. So office demand is falling even among companies that are adding employees, but they're working from home. So they're saying, why do we need office spaces? Twitter, not to discuss the free speech debate, but the company Twitter has announced to their employees, you can work from home forever. They are based in San Francisco. Can you imagine staying in San Francisco in a small, tiny house while one can then now move to say Idaho, Utah, or Arizona, have a larger size home, knowing that you can work from home forever? And also thank you, uh, President Mandy, because one thing that we emphasize is we get information from local association president across the country, and we have heard, get the high-speed internet to all the rural areas across the country. So we're advocating strongly uh, to Congress to say, work from home. We wanna make sure that rural 
uh, communities are not disadvantaged. So we want that high speed internet accessibility. Uh, but the office demand is collapsing. And also for people who are investing in commercial real estate, uh, you can see where the money is being made and where the money is being lost. Data centers, self-storage and industrial warehouses making money, but office investment, losing money, retail spaces, hotel, uh, losing a lot of money. We ask realtors, as you are showing your clients where to buy the home, where, which location is your clients preferring? And they're saying in the suburbs or rural areas or smaller towns and away from city centers. City centers should be about 25% response rate, but you can see how it declined. So the summarizing this the chart is away from city center and out into the suburbs, rural area. This is principally from office workers. Even with a vaccine, I think many office workers believe they can work from home more frequently. It's not going to be five days a week going to office. So if it's going to be two days in office, other three days at, uh, at their home, uh, then people may say, why am I so close to downtown? Maybe I can live farther out, uh, you know, much farther out from the downtown. Or in some cases, people may say, I don't want to live in LA. I want to go to Arizona. Uh, maybe I can just you know, commute a, a few times a month to go to LA downtown. So this will greatly benefit some of the trend of people really desiring residential choice for the location rather than for job. And Arizona with a great weather, uh, you may begin to benefit from that condition. Last one, resort recreation area should always be less than 10%, but now popping in at 13%. Let me show you this chart. This is home sales growth between vacation counties, large prevalence of second homes versus normal counties. And we are seeing sales growth in vacation counties being much stronger. How would you know whether I am at home or at vacation home? Why should the boss care? Knowing that people could have possibly long weekend, work from home on Friday, work from home on Monday, along with the weekends, people may begin to say, why don't I have a home far, far away? Or maybe they wanna have a second home, true vacation home, knowing they can utilize more frequently now with that long weekend uh, time period. So vacation homes are clearly rising and this is where Arizona will benefit. I mean, many people are moving into Arizona first because of the uh, warm weather in the winter. Uh, summer, I know it's hot, but you, know, you can always, I guess, drive up to Flagstaff or, but, but people who have truly have a second home say, well, you know, I have an office in Chicago. Why don't I have a, uh, a home in Arizona where I can work in the winter months? So you may begin to see this dynamics, which for uh, Arizona could be a big beneficiary. Let me wrap it up with a forecast. Economic forecast is the following. Middle column, 2020, recession, down on economy, down on jobs, interest rate low, no inflation, even with printing of the money. But as we go into 2021, definitely positive. Stimulus package, vaccine is going to be positive. 10-year treasury is acting up only in a moderate way. So a slight increase. Mortgage rate will also rise from that. Inflation edging up, but nothing alarming. And as to the housing market forecast, 2020 was an amazing year for housing. Low interest rates, builders sold 19% more homes. MLS transactions, existing home sales up 6%, prices up 7%. I know in your area, you're saying, oh, I'm doing much better than that because of faster job growth. In 2021 forecast is the mortgage rate, absolute low point is over, but still very attractive. Builders, build it. You can do an additional 20% home sales growth in existing home sales. When I did the calculation, you are looking at the spring months of this year in 2021 to be way above 2020, because 2020 was a lockdown. So you know, it's kind of distorted. But as I looked at numbers by the fourth quarter of 2021, even if it's a little below what it was last year, it will still lead to 15% gain, annual gains in home sales. Prices, definitely not in the territory of falling. 
I hope it moderates with increased supply, uh, but very good housing market, economic backdrop. And I hope many of you can participate uh, in this uh, growing housing market condition. But again, thank you for inviting uh, to share some of my thoughts. Now I'm gonna turn it uh, over. Awesome. Well, thank you, Dr. Yoon. That was amazing. And I hope you all um, have a couple questions. Do we have time for two or three questions? Yes, I can do that. All right. Awesome. While you're thinking of your questions and you're typing them in the chat box or the Q&A, I would like you to think about some of the things he told you. We are in a service industry, but at the end of the day, he should have changed your mindset with how you're marketing. And something I took away is you get to live the lifestyle you desire. No matter if you're working from home, does your house reflect that lifestyle? Do you want to live near a mountain? And if you have internet, like you said, and I'll get my government affairs director right on that, Dr. Yoon. If you have internet, are you living next to a mountain so you can go mountain biking anytime you want or whatever the case is? So that was incredible. Um, Andy Gonzalez does ask, when do you see the demand cool down a bit? Um, I know the Cromford report is something we follow heavily in the Maricopa County area. And they are saying that we've had a decrease in demand in February slightly. What's your perspective there? Uh, so demand in February, uh, I, know I have not seen the report and certainly uh, you know, I'm not a local market expert, but uh, most likely is referring to the case that compared to what occurred late in 2020, uh, it is a little softer but if you were to look at say January or February sales activity compared to one year before, my guess is that it's probably still up, uh, which means that compared to pre-pandemic condition, uh, it is up. Uh, but if it's actually trending a little lower, uh, it could be due to the fact that prices in your area have risen so much. Demand is solid, but some people are simply getting choked off. The first time buyers, they don't have the down payment. Uh, the prices are outpacing people's income growth. So that could be the, uh, uh, the hurdle uh, as to why the demand could be softening. And again, that means that we need more supply so that prices get tamed down. And that's exactly what that follow-up was on the Cromford report was people just saw such a frenzy and our price points, you know, in one month have risen on a median of almost $4,000. So, I mean, that little price talk, just like you spoke about, a lot of people are typing about, you know, the fear factor that we had and you, you did touch on this, you touched on this quite a bit, but the fear factor that consumers have in the Maricopa County area and the whole state of Arizona, if not the whole country, of some kind of crash. And as you mentioned, we don't have the same factors we had in 07, but how would you answer that question of when someone says, I'm waiting for the market to crash? Uh, so, uh, you know, one has to be very objective on the data. You know, you cannot be, uh, you know, blindly optimistic. You have to support it with data. So here's two data points. Back in 2008 period, which preceded the crash, funny mortgages, mortgages for anyone with a heartbeat. Today, just trying to obtain a mortgage, how many documents you have to show. So that's one fundamental difference. Second part uh, is that back in 2005, six period, there was a overbuilding. Home builders went wild. They just were building right and left, just uh, you know, spec homes. But today, the data shows that home builders have been underproducing for many years. So we have a housing shortage. So you just ask the consumer, do we have a housing shortage? And if so, then it's completely different from oversupply condition of 2008. Only modest concern that I have is that mortgage forbearance period, once that goes away, how many people would have to sell their home? I don't think it will be foreclosure sales, but given such a strong demand, even those property will be quickly absorbed. But if it lingers, then you may begin to see some uh, price cuts, uh, but this will be just modest thing. It's not like a 50% price decline that Phoenix experienced back in 2010. Awesome. I hope you guys had a lot to take away from that. The last question Shelby put on there was, um, and you did touch on this in your presentation, but if you could reiterate, will prices continue to rise for single family homes, even though the mortgage rates are rising slightly, even though we're like, I know I can buy down a rate right now for a refi to 1.75. That's that's ridiculous. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, 1.75. That, that does sound ridiculous, but if you can get it, get it. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, the... Uh, 
interest rate increases are just in the decimal points, uh, and therefore, uh, I don't think it will make a difference. It's really about the price points. So the price is not rising another 10%. So only way to prevent prices from rising so strongly is we have to have more building. Uh, and it looks like, again, we have turned a corner on home building so that more inventory should steadily appear uh, from spring and onwards. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you will be a much uh, better conditions for both buyers and sellers. Awesome. And sir, I would just like to thank you for all the tools you regularly give us as realtors. A national association offers so much value just from you alone. So we are so blessed to be part of the 1.4 million. And with that, you guys go sell a house, serve some clients, make their dreams come true. And Dr. Yoon, we'll definitely see you at mid-year. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone.